All right, guys, it's been a while. I know it's been uh, it's been a little bit. I don't have the I have not been uh, purchasing a lot of things lately because well, I don't want to just purchase to open stuff up. But um, Flesh and Blood finally has their unlimited release. Um, I opened one first edition box. I have a couple more sitting in my closet. Um, but I purposely held off till unlimited because I really wanted to open the product because I really want some of the stuff in here but I didn't really want to open first edition stuff because the prices for first edition is just too high in my opinion to um, justify pulling the cards out. I know that they have cool exclusive cards that you can't get anywhere else and that's really neat for anybody who's into collecting that kind of stuff but for me personally um, this is a hobby um, more so than like a collectible uh it is collectible don't get me wrong I, I love the collecting aspect of it too but it's a hobby in the sense that like i prefer i prefer getting the cards i want to play with um more so than the collectible portion of this game um though i will probably buy singles from people if from first edition stuff if if it's the right single and stuff uh i did get a really cool um promo here i'll go grab that real quick uh from the card shop Sorry, that took so long, but they gave me a cool rainbow foil uh, of the hero, Prism. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I got her Blitz deck a while back, and they have like this little cool full arts card. I really I really enjoy Prism's um, play style. I, did it, I used her quite a bit in my limited uh, play. Um, a couple of the stores around me have some limited play coming up soon, which I'm pretty excited about. We're going to do some armory events and some skirmishes stuff so well uh, pretty exciting um one thing i noticed about the unlimited cards is they changed the little set symbol to be a little i don't know obviously more noticeable they're not filled in they're unfilled in um but the cards still look primarily the same right you still have the same layout you're gonna have the rainbow foil in the rainbow foil position which is nice we got a rare right off the bat rainbow foil um, Battlefield Blitz, which is really cool. The um, cold foil area of the thing is just um, will be rainbow foil now instead of being cold foil, which I, honestly doesn't bother me a bit. And then we got our rares, which have that little blue circle instead of filled in. It's just highlighted. And then a Majestic Luminous Ascension. Very cool, actually. Um, those are some of the cards that I was actually looking for. Um, oh man, so fun to open stuff like this when you know that the cards that you want are pretty much all of them at this point. Like, I didn't open enough of the product to feel like I have enough of everything. So, like, opening up most of this, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. Well, I mean, I don't know. If you guys want to check some of this stuff out, that's fine. But um, the art on this set is pretty cool. It's I love the angelic theme of a lot of this stuff. Um, I like angels. The other theme, the demon sh shadow theme, it's really, it's really dark. Um, and it, it would definitely keep me, uh, it would definitely keep me from saying, hey, kid, let's go play, uh, Flesh and Blood without actually explaining to him that it's, that it's okay if he's not comfortable. I, it's it's weird. I don't think he, they should stop doing it. I think it's really neat, and it should be something that they're the the player base um, decides whether or not they are interested in it. If they aren't, they'll they'll tell Legend Story Studios with their dollars. So got a couple of rares, pulping and glisten, and we got a prism token. So there's a there's a few people online who have gone to doing some really cool stuff with the tokens, especially the heroes. They've been, like, um, taking the tokens and making them, like, a 3D version. They cut certain layers of each of the tokens out to stack them up on each other, and I'm going to say they look really, really good. And 
if they actually decide to start selling any of those, I'd probably look into buying one. All right, so our first foil is Rifted Torment, yellow. Blood Drop Brocade. This is such a good looking card. I think this would, this is one of the few commons that I think I would really like in the actual cold foil, which I'm glad it's common because um, it'll make it not as expensive. We got ourselves a Battlefield Blitz non-foil. I guess I should set that. Um, Valent Thrust. And the User, Soul Reaper, and Blasphemit, the Soul Harvester. I got this as the promo card for um, one of the kits I bought from an online uh, distributor. Or, not, I guess not a distributor. He, um, it's like a YouTube influencer, card game influencer. He sells these kind of things to um, people, and he gave a, he had like a special promo fit to that. All right, next. Engulfing Light is a common form. Iron Legs. Invigorating Light, Light Action. Seeping Shadows, it's a Rune Blade. And Soul Shackle. I think Soul Shackle is so good. Like, I know that you can lose your deck and stuff, but uh, being able to cycle through your deck and uh, see what you're getting, I don't know. Seems like a good, good way of... Uh, Good way of playing a game. All right, rip through reality. Let's see, seek enlightenment. Okay, ode to wrath is a rare foil. This is a really cool piece of art. It, like it got that hand drawn look and that like this sword kind of. I don't know. I really like the mosaic kind of art style on this one. I really really appreciate it. Uh, Eleanor Pietra, Pietra, really cool. That was a nice rare foil. Time skippers. Phantasma 5. Really need a couple of those. Vexing Malice and Chain with the Galaxy Blade. Chain is a Shadow Room Blade. I'm pretty excited. This game, I know a lot. there's been a lot of talk about Monarch. Um, a lot of people are a little complaining about the values of certain things dropping, but let's across the board, values in every market kind of dropped over the last month or so and uh, card games are going to fall into that category as well. So, Herald of Rebirth, the Foil Angel, Evan Fold, the Common Gear, Endless Maw. This guy actually looks like, I don't know, he looks like a straight out of a video game monster um, boss. Bolting Blade, this is a bunkers card. Seven damage for two attack if you charge this turn. Like, I feel like this is. I feel like that's a good one, um, and that's probably why it's a mythic. So, majestic. I keep saying that I, I still play Magic of the Gathering, even though I, some of my more hardcore Flesh and Blood uh, players, uh, they they kind of give me a little bit of hard time about it. Like Magic is such a bad game, whatever. I I, I like it still. I still like it. Um, I don't play so much um, Arena, but I do play uh, face to face Magic because it's still a really well designed game in my opinion. Um, Bolt of Courage. I will say, like, some of the actic antics they do in some of the stuff, the way they sell in too much product, I think it's a little whatever, but it doesn't surprise me. Businesses are businesses, and customers, businesses will do what customers are asking them to do for the most part. If a business isn't making any money off of the products they're building, they'll stop building that product. But if everybody buys the product that they're selling, why wouldn't the company continue giving the customer what they want? And... People have lately been complaining that like Magic the Gathering has moved to um, distributing their products online into like uh, Amazon. Um, and while that's true, the customers actually ask for it. Nobody wants to pay $120 for a booster box. And the cheapest way to do that type of distribution is to have a single distribution point where they can sell the boxes for $95 to $100. But it's unfortunate because like these little mom and pop stores that's where their margin is is on the booster box or whatever if they sell it for 90 bucks that's what the cost is for them so like they can't afford to compete with amazon and that's too bad because the players are buying boxes instead of packs at this point and like um time skippers i'm gonna go through this real quick uh dimensional dimensional gateway held of triumph um so the players are buying boxes instead of packs at this point and in they want the cheapest price available, and Amazon's going to provide that price. 
and Wizards of the Coast or Magic, they're, they're just giving them what they want. And the unfortunate part is maybe the, <laughs> it sucks sometimes is there's a percentage of people who recognize that like the game game was built off of not just giving the customer what they wanted, but building a game that the that would attract players to play it. And the company Wizards may have moved to a different model in the fact that they're just giving the customers what they can ex want and extract value from instead of building a really fun game that the customers like playing. And I think that's where Legends Stu uh, Studios has done um, a fantastic job. Like, they've done the little things like uh, adding these little um, emblems to the cards to indicate what rarity they are. They've done little things like the uh, emblem is circled or not circled, filled in to indicate first edition and not. But they stuck to the core idea of what they're going to do for the game. Outside of what players might think is good for the game, they said, this is what we want to do. And the players are experiencing the game and still deciding that they want this product. Um, even though maybe some of their influence isn't being met. Um, like, I want, oh, I really think we should have more regular here. Well, they didn't do that. And unfortunately, it still worked out really good. So, like, I think there is a balance most companies have to make about giving customers what they want. Convulsions of the Bellows of Hell. I love this card because of the long title. Also, it's a really nasty looking card. Um, giving players what they want as well as balancing what the customers need in the sense of having a successful uh, trading card game with playable um, mechanics. So We'll have to wait and see how it all goes. Hey, look at that. I think this would be our cold foil. We got ourselves a foil Galantry Gold. I think, well, technically this would be in our cold foil slot, so I don't know. We'll, still, we'll throw that aside. Foil equipment seems to be the, where would most uh, cold foil equip, we'll, we'll have to see. If there's another piece, we'll, we'll see it. Blitzing Battlefield, Herald of Triumph, and Iris of Reality. Oh. I have, um, I, so I play a couple games right now. I have um, Flesh and Blood, of course, Magic the Gathering, and uh, a game called Force of Will. Force of Will is kind of an older game. It's It's been around for a lot of years, and it had a real slow downtime um, in the mid-teens, you know, through like 2015 to 20, well, maybe 2016, 17, to like maybe even to 2020. 2020, believe it or not, during the pandemic, Force of Will started picking back up, and oh man, I gotta say it's 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 grossly overpowered, um, and they have a lot of power creep in that game. But it's in a really good place. It the game feels good, and they're and the people running the um, the card game. I feel like they genuinely want the card game to succeed because they're doing some stuff that is making the game feel fresh and uh, alive again. Hey, we got ourselves another foil equipment. So maybe these aren't the cold foils, but we got ourselves an Aether Iron Weave. And the cold foil slot would have been this one. So maybe those are not cold foils. All right, Valent Thrust. Howl from Beyond. Really cool card that guy is being ripped apart by his own demon intestines. <laughs> so weird to say. And so that was actually what I was going to say. Is I played a couple different card games, and Flesh and Blood, I would say, is probably... The only card game I would say that I would probably... Flesh and Blood has a 13-plus feel to it. I know that like there are some kids who are not 13 who have played the game and have grasped the concepts, and I think they can understand that the art on the card is not actually of any demonic origin. It's just... It's just a uh, an art direction. But it... Uh, I like that. That looks cool. The fact that the only actual foiling area in there is a light. Um, Dreamweavers. Great, great card. Uh, Seek Horizon. The... Ooh, nice Herald of Erudition. Mythic. Um, the game is is adult-centric, I guess. And, and they don't shy away from that. And that's fine. Um, and I think as long as the kid who is playing the game who isn't of an adult nature understands I don't know, mature concepts and I don't think see it as a problem. Magic the Gathering, I think, is a little bit better in the sense of like keeping things young. 
they've had their moments where they've gone a little risque with their card art design, and that's fine. But and then Flesh and Blood is a different thing. They're they're anime style, and some of their anime styles can be a little um provocative. But for the most part, I I feel like they have the youngest looking um card game, though maybe some of the more provocative art uh, at some points. So Herald of Judgment, Out Muscled, uh, but the Force of Will is good. I really like it, and um, it's in a really good place. This game's in a really good place. I think Magic, for the most part, is in a good place, though I think, for me personally, I can't keep up with the product they're releasing. Like I, I, am, I really liked the Modern Horizon 1 draft that they did a couple years ago. But I was not into the price point at two hundred dollars for a booster box. This is too much for me. I don't, I don't particularly like paying that much for a box of cards. I don't even do that with my comic cards. I, I tend to keep them down. All right, Aether Weave, a nice Phantasmal, Captain's Call, and Ravis Meat Axe. Give me a moment, guys. Sorry about that, guys. I. Uh, my wife had come home, um, and she was needed some help with the groceries. Uh, back to what I was talking about. Uh, so I think all of them have a good state of game. I don't like two hundred dollar boxes of cards. Ultimately, um, that's not fun for anyone. Nobody wants to spend that kind of money on a single box of cards, especially when it's a collectible. Where you're never going to get all the things you need out of one box. And if if you need to buy multiple boxes, I want a multi couple boxes for two hundred bucks. So. This is why um, I feel like Legend Story of Studios has got the right idea with their unlimited product where they, sure, they take away some of the more exclusive cards that real collectors want. And even, I guess even Magic Gathering to some point has figured out um, how to cater to the collectors versus the, but they have too many products now. They have the, um, work, they have the, uh, collector's boxes which are really expensive oh this is cool um which are really expensive but probably the right price right um and then they have the draft boxes which are the normal boxes that we play with when we uh do any type of sealed event or draft event we we, have, we use the draft boxes but then they have the set box which is a weird combination which is honestly my favorite because it contains extra little like collectibles but it's priced right at that same draft box price so I, like I struggle with what I want um I think the collector's boxes I don't bother with because I don't particularly love foils in Magic the Gathering and they have all the cool shifty arts with the full arts and stuff and if I want them I can actually buy them from people who do buy the um Bolt of Courage is a cool card uh buy the collector's boxes so that's cool there and then I just buy the set boxes or draft boxes to play with and I, I think that's actually a really good idea and Legend Studios has figured out the same mechanic there's people who want that elite exclusive I got the first edition box and I'll pay a premium to have that and kind of like flex my cold foils in front of you to show you that I'm I'm in the front row of all the cool stuff and that's good for them like good for them having an opportunity to do that and there's uh, entire communities out there that trade and talk about the cards i don't think they're just doing it just to show off or anything i think they genuinely like it like everybody does with their cool we got <laughs> we got a foil mythic raiden dosbane what a cool cool card and see again i think that would have been our cold foil but it's just our rainbow foil and our cold foil slot is just a regular dream weaver so i don't know Gateway, Unhallowed Rites. If anything, I got myself three uh, foiled equipments, which I'm going to be pretty happy about. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm pretty happy about. Um, I think one of the things I've been doing is I've been trying to save some money. I want to buy a different camera setup. Me and my wife are going to sell the place where we're living in now and move. And part of what I want to do is set up a little, like, studio for myself for cards and collecting and doing these like little hand YouTube videos. I'm, I might even start streaming some of my, I, I want to interact with like communities of people who play. Hey, this is crazy. We got two of the same foils. Like right in the back to back. Even the same pitch color and everything. 
At least it's a good looking card. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily think I, uh, I'm not huge interested in, in growing a channel or anything. I really just want to hang out and chat with people that are in the same interests as me. Um, and that's what I do with YouTube. Uh, oh, nice. Dreadscythe Mythic. Oh, man, that's so cool. I like getting these equipments because these are the these are the pieces that make a, a guy go. So, um, so I've been actually doing that. I've been playing up a couple video games of, of, of late that I think would have a decent community of people that would would uh, really benefit from interacting with while playing. So, uh, and I would like to get to the point where I can actually play something like this on a stream I'd like to like the studio I'd like to set up so we can do a game and then have the game talked about while the game's playing like we could play the game and then I could do a step-by-step -step or uh, announce announcement basically over top of the game because like explaining the game as it's being played I think is something I really enjoyed. I've seen a couple guys do it during the tournaments. Um, you have these announcers who are just kind of describing what's going on during the game and kind of not doing a play-by-play, -play, but doing a play-by-play -play in a fresh enough way where it's interesting. And honestly, I gotta say, it's one of my favorite ways of watching um, card games. I don't particularly like watching the slow card games where the guys are just talking about the cards you're playing because that can kind of be dull and a little bit boring. But if you have a uh, color commentator who's actually doing a good play-by-play -play, um, of what's happening, it can be very interesting. So I'm thinking about doing something along those lines, eventually setting it up so I can do games and then do a play-by-play -play over top of the game that's been playing. And maybe get some games out there um, in that fashion and maybe highlight some deck ideas, right? So we can do some um, color commentary gaming based on some ideas, uh, deck idea brews that we've been working on to see if we can get, um, generate some more interest in some brew, some deck brew theorizing out there, because I'm sure a lot, there's, well, what's this? Should be, I think, this is going to be an interesting pack. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of people who've already figured out the meta of Monarch and stuff, but uh, I have not in my groups. I don't. I'm not in the groups that are deep into the. Oh, cool! Listen, foil, super neat. Uh, stubby hammers again. Captain's call. All from beyond and oh, a cracked bottle. Okay, I'm like, what? What was that card? Very cool. Um, but anyhow. That would give me the opportunity to to do some brewing, some deck brewing, some ideas, maybe even um, bring in other people who, from like the game stores that I go to, who might be interested or come up with a cool brew idea, and we could do videotape a couple of those games, and then I could go and break them down in such a way that kind of explains each each particular move and why somebody did a particular move the way they did it just kind of break it down. I think it would be cool. And also, it would force me to learn to use the video editing software, um, which I would like to eventually do, because, let's be real, my videos are kind of pretty uh, pretty normal. They're very uh, run-of-the-mill, just point-and-click camera on a static background with a guy talking non-stop without any cuts. Half the time, probably talking about stuff most people don't even really care about. <laughs> Unright, hallow, uh, hallowed, unhallowed right, sorry. Um, Hoops of the Shadow Beast. That's Path B of the Vanguard. I like this Bolden character. He has some really cool action cards. Okay, only a couple packs left and I'll leave you guys alone for a while. I have another box of this. I'll probably open up. I'll probably open up on camera because I like opening most of my product on camera just for the sake of documentating but it also gives me a ability to turn back oh cool we got ourselves another foil mythic beacon of victory this is really cool this swords and sp look really sharp 
Oh, you guys can't see it as good as I can, but the swords look really sharp in foil. Oh, what a cool looking card. We got ourselves Dreamweavers. V for Vanguard again, of the Vanguard, and Battle of the Blitz. Oh, wait, I have another pack. <laughs> I thought we were done. Sorry. All right. Well, last pack, guys. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys see this. I gotta crack bubbles. Um, see this and then think, hey, I wanna go play that game. Go find a <coughs> store that's playing the game and play. Learn to play. They have Blitz decks. They're really good. They're really fun to use. The game's super cool. If you are at all interested, find somebody who's playing the game. I'm sure they will teach you in a heartbeat. Just go down to the store, play it, and uh, learn the game. It's super fun. It's super worth it. Because of the way the product's distributed, the product itself is fairly inexpensive, which means you can get into the game fairly cheaply. Um, one of the things I would say is you're going to immediately start hearing things like Fabled and Legends, uh, Legendaries um, passed around. And those are pretty expensive cards, um, to be honest. And at some point, you're probably going to want the Legendary equipment for your the character that you, if you decide you want to play Prism, you're going to want that Prism-specific Legendary. And it can be $50, $100, $250 for a card. But you only need one of them. And it's, it's a piece that... You don't need multiple copies of it. It's a piece that isn't necessary for you to build the prism deck first. It's something you can build into at some point. Um, and yes, it does have its advantages if you do build into early. Uh, but the other good news is if the game succeeds and there's players playing it, you can sell that legendary piece of equipment back off to somebody who else who wants to play prism at some point for probably the same price you paid for it. So you gotta remember, yes, there is some some initial like capitalization that you have to put into the game, but in the long run, it's the more stable the game is and the more players you have of the game, the more likely this game is going to um Return whatever you invest into it. Um, well, that's, that's the hope, I guess. Anyhow, thanks to everybody. Peace. I'll talk to you guys later.